Welcome everyone to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about sleep disorders. This is continuing my block of podcasts on mental health disorders slash illnesses. This one's a doozy, although maybe not as impactful as some others in, in, you know, in certain ways, but sleep is so important. As usual, I will probably read the article word for word and inject my two cents every once in a while. There'll be a link to the article in the description. This is from the National Library of Medicine. It's a different site from the other one I've used, but I've used this before. I've done several of these now. This one, I think, actually gives credit. So this article is by Bibek Karma. Abdul Ghani Sankart Jessica Tatikanda. <laughs> and so begins my murdering of the English language. Again, this is Sleep Disorders, National Library of Medicine. And I'll start. Sleep disorders encompass several clinical problems encountered in outpatient settings. Sleep disorders have a broad differential diagnosis. Therefore, standardized definitions and classifications are essential. There are many different types of sleep disorders. Using the International Classification of Sleep Disorders, ICSD, helps in providing a standardized classification and definitions for sleep disorders. Sleep disorders are common in both adults and children. However, children with sleep disorders may present with different symptoms than adults. This activity reviews the evaluation and management of sleep disorders and highlights the role of the interprofessional team in evaluating and treating patients with this condition. Again, I say this sometimes in some of my podcasts, but these articles I'm reading are really technically, I don't know if they're articles, they're not opinion pieces in a sense, they're medical board reviewed uh, criteria that they use. So it is a little different from me reading an article piece on something where it's an opinion piece about sleep disorders. I just want to make that, not that I'm clarifying <laughs> that well. So they'll be identifying the ontology of sleep disorders, describe the evaluation of sleep disorders, explain the management options available for sleep disorders, summarize the professional approach to coordinating care and treating patients with sleep disorders, to achieve the best patient outcomes. Sleep disorders are a group of conditions that disturb normal sleep patterns. Sleep disorders are one of the most common clinical problems encountered. Inadequate or non-restorative sleep can interfere with normal physical, mental, social, and emotional functioning. Sleep disorders can affect overall health, safety, and quality of life. A study shows significant impairment in the quality of life with patients with insomnia. By the way, this one has not highlighted links. Well, technically, it'll have numbers next to it. Those you can highlight, which will give you more information on what is being talked about. So, for instance, this one is insomnia. You can hit the link and go do a deep dive on insomnia. There are many different types of sleep disorders. The International Classification of Sleep Disorders, IACSD, Health provide a standardized classification and definitions for sleep disorders, specifically the third edition of the ICSD-3. Includes the following categories of sleep disorders. Insomnia, sleep disordered breathing, central disorders of hypersomnolence. <laughs> I knew that was coming. See, I, you can tell when I started the insomnia thing. Central Disorders of Hypersomnolence, Circadian Rhythm Sleep Weight Disorders, Parasomnias, Sleep Related Movement Disorders. Sleep disorders are common in both adults and children. However, children with sleep disorders may present with different symptoms than adults. Children with sleep problems may exhibit motor overactivity, inattentiveness, inability, or oppositional behavior rather than overt sleepness or sleepiness. Here we will review sleep disorders in adults and sleep disorders in pediatrics 
will be discussed in different sections. Etiology. There are different causes for different sleep disorders. For each sleep disorder listed below, more details are discussed in the pertinent section referred below. Reference below. Insomnia. The exact causes of insomnia are unknown. Some contributing factors include environmental, genetic, psychological, and behavioral, leading to hyperarousal. Sleep disordered breathing, SDB. The causes of SDB range from breathing control to upper airway and chest wall mechanics, causing com compromise, ventilatory, and resistive loading. SDB is a spectrum of disorders ranging from syndrome of OSA and central sleep apnea. In the obstructive type of SDB, obesity plays a key role, and more information is discussed in the sections on OSA, CSA, and obesity hyperventilation syndrome, and there are links provided for those. Central disorders of hyposomnolence. <laughs> The central causes of hypersomnolence are commonly due to intrinsic abnormalities in the central nervous system's control of sleep-wake. Central hypersomnia is usually divided into three main subtypes, narcolepsy type 1, narcolepsy type 2, and idiopathic hypersomnia, IH, which are reviewed in more detail in separate sections. They give links for that. In addition, other causes of central hypersomnolence include Klein-Levin syndrome, hypersomnia due to medical disorder, medical or substance, psychiatric disorder, and sleep insufficiency syndrome. Uh, circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders, CRSD. The, resp the re responsible causes of CRSD can be divided into two major groups. The environment is not well aligned with the internal circadian timing, e.g. shift, work, jet lag, and two, those occurring when the circadian timing systems become altered relative to the external environment. An example, delayed sleep phase syndrome, um, advanced sleep phase syndrome 24, or fuck that is, irregular sleep-wake rhythm. More details are outlined in separate review articles. Parasomnias. The causes of parasomnia vary from environmental, genetic, and gene environmental interactions, all of which may play a significant role in the origin of parasomnia. Parasomnia is divided into the following major categories non rapid eye movement, NREM, related parasomnias, rapid eye movement, REM related parasomnias, and other parasomnias. <laughs> And REM related parasomnias include confusional arousal, sleep waking, sleep terrors, and a sleep related eating disorder. REM related parasomnias include REM sleep behavior disorder, RBD, <laughs> and nightmare disorder. The etiology of various types of parasomnia is discussed in a separate article. Sleep related movement disorders. Abnormal movements during sleep are disorders of motor control, excitation, or dehabilitation often associated with sleep disturbances. The etiology of various movements conditioned during sleep depends on the type that, of that disorder. For example, in restless leg syndrome, RLS, the etiology could be primarily due to familial and genetic predisposition or secondary to iron deficiency. More details on the etiology of RLS are discussed in a separate article. Other sleep-related movement disorders include categories based on the type of movements, simple, periodic, rhythmic, or complex conditions, some of which are associated with parasomnias. This will be discussed in a different a detailed section. Epidemiology. The prevalence of sleep disorders differs based on the specific condition. A link between SDB short sleep duration, and non-restorative sleep has recently been reported. A recent study has linked poor sleep with other sleep disorders. For example, among many of the patients with diabetes reported poor sleep. Although participants screened positive for RLS and 51% had an increased risk for OSA. 
Oh, 47% of the participants screen positive. Um, uh, we will briefly list the prevalence of each major sleep disorder in a classify, as classified by the IEC SD3. Insomnia. Difficulty sleeping or insomnia symptoms are among the most common medical complaint, complaints affecting nearly a third of the adult population. When the symptoms are severe enough to cause daytime consequences, the prevalence is estimated to be approximately 10% and is higher among women than men, 17.6 versus 10.1 respectively. In addition, insomnia is found to be persistent disorder lasting over five years and affects over 40% of patients if they have severe insomnia symptoms at presentation. Sleep Disordered Breathing, SDB. The prevalence of SDB is dependent on the type of disease. As people age, the incidence of sleep problems also rise. Approximately 50% of older adults have sleep problems. Details on the prevalence of specific SDB, obstructive central, upper airway resistance syndrome, sleep-related hypervention syndrome, or obesity hyper hyperventilation as outlined in their respective articles and there's links for that again I, I i laughed hard the last time i like how they say older adults but they don't put an age here <laughs> anyway central disorders of hypersomnia the prevalence of narcolepsy in the general population is approximately 142,600 individuals, 44.3 per 100,000 persons. But there is a reported trend of increase over the last decade, by 14% from 38.9 in 2013 to 44.3 in 2016. Likewise, the prevalence of idiopathic hypersomnia also increased by 32%, from 7.8 to 10.3 per 100,000 persons with similar rates between both sexes. Circadian Rhythm Sleep-Wake Disorders, CRSD. The prevalence of CRSD among the general population depends on the type and is reported to be between 0.13 to 0.17%. However, the prevalence is higher among individuals with comorbid psychiatric illnesses, delayed sleep phase syndrome, DSPD, is common in adolescents and youth adults, on young adults, with an estimated prevalence of 7 to 16 percent. Parasomnia, such as sleepwalking, confusional arousals, sleep terrors, sleep talking, and nightmares are prevalent, including during childhood. The overall parasomnia prevalence in the OSA group is approximately 3 percent in the NREM group, such as sleepwalking, sexual acts during sleep, <laughs> sleep relating related eating forty three percent forty three point eight percent in nightmares and the prevalence of RBD is estimated to be eight point seven per one hundred thousand people with men to women ratio three to one sleep related movement disorders Restless leg syndrome and periodic limb movement disorder are also more prevalent in the elderly. See, not elderly. All right, so you got older adults, elderly, young adults, adolescents, pediatrics. All right, so I, I get it. I'm getting, I'm getting to see the spectrum here. <sighs> Primary insomnia is more common in women over 50 than their male counterparts. The prevalence of periodic leg movement disorder, PLMD, is approximately 40 per 100,000 persons and has increased in the last decade about 30%. Hmm. There are gender differences in many of these sleep disorders. The prevalence of insomnia is higher in women than men throughout most of life, with a ratio of 1.4 to 1.0. The prevalence of RLS is twice as high for women as for men. 9.0 versus 5.4 across all ages. In contrast, the prevalence of SDB is higher in men than in <laughs> premenopausal women with a ratio of 2.1. In, in a certain area, the prevalence of SDB increased over time in both sexes, 26.4 to 33.9 in men, and 13.2 to 17.4 in women. 
Several possibilities for this increase in prevalence were contemplated, including increased obesity and aging of the general population, in addition to improved diagnostic techniques. There are also racial and ethnic differences in the prevalence of sleep disorders. In the multi-ethnic study of astrocirrhosis, MESA, Hispanics and Chinese individuals had higher odds of SDB and short sleep than whites. Likewise, black have higher odds for sleep apnea syndrome, AHI, five events per hour associated with excessive daytime sleepness compared to white after adjusting for age, gender, and BMI. History and physical. The clinical pres uh, presentation of sleep disorders depend on the specific disease. In general, sleep disturbances can present with a wide range of clinical pictures and commonly include insomnia, hypersomnia, or unusual sleep-related behaviors. Early identification of the underlying sleep disorder is essential to prevent complications and health consequences. A detailed history, sleep habits, and work schedule are critical to the assessment. Obtaining a complete list of medications, both prescribed and over-the-counter, is essential in assessing patients with sleep disturbances. In addition, evaluating detailed family social history is very important, including any substances used by patients that can affect sleep and or breathing. <laughs> oh boy. That's a lot of stuff. Insomnia. Insomnia may present difficulty falling asleep and or staying asleep. Patients report taking 30 minutes or more to fall asleep for those with sleep initiation difficulties or spending 30 minutes or more awake during the night for those with sleep maintenance difficulties. The diagnosis of insomnia also requires the presence of compromised daytime function, which includes one or more symptoms like fatigue, daytime sleepiness, poor attention, increased accidents, aggression, reduced motivation, or energy. Insomnia can often be persistent or recurrent condition with exacerbations connected to medical, psychiatric, and psychosocial stressors. Recently, insomnia was classified as a short-term and chronic type. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> oh, shit. That's like, I'm going to put on my profile if I ever go dating site. Yeah. I'm going to classify short-term and chronic type. I, uh, the ICSD-3 criteria of diagnosis of chronic insomnia disorder include the following three conditions. Difficulty in sleep initiation or maintenance, adequate opportu opportunity to sleep, and three, presence of daytime consequences due to difficulty sleeping. These conditions should last for at least three months and thrice weekly. Early identification of insomnia is crucial and requires Low thresholds for suspicion. Clinical features that predispose, precipitate, and perpetuate insomnia symptoms should be identified from history. Hypersomnia. Patients with hypersomnia complain of disabling excessive daytime sleepiness. They find it difficult to maintain alertness during significant waking hours with sleep occurring unintentionally or inappropriate times that interfere with the day, daily routine. Many patients describe a considerable impact on their cognitive function, calling it brain fog. <laughs> in addition, in idiopathic hypersomnia, there has been an association between excessive sleepiness and depressive symptoms and low quality of life. Fatigue can present in broad range of sleep disorders and can be confused with sleepiness. The severity of hypersomnia and fatigue are commonly measured by questionnaires such as the Epworth Sleepiness Scale and Fatigue Severity Scale. There are links for that, by the way. Other sleepiness features are related to sleep duration, such as idiopathic hypersomnia, IH, or specific <laughs> neurobiological disorder, such as narcolepsy. IH has distinctive clinical features in addition to the severity of hypersomnia, such as prolonged nighttime sleep, more than 10 hours and sleep inertia. Narcolepsy, however, is a chronic neurological disorder due to the brain's inability to control sleep and wakefulness. It is associated with a low cere cerebrospinal fluid level of orexin 
a hypocritin. Hypocritin. <laughs> Patients with narcolepsy complain of excessive chronic daytime sleepiness with category type 1 or without category type 2 transient loss of muscle tone in response to intense emotions such as laughter, hallucinations while falling asleep, hypoanagoric hallucinations or hallucinations while waking, hypopomic hallucinations, <laughs> and sleep paralysis, inability to move immediately after waking. Cataplexy can be manifested commonly more than 50% of the time as non-typical presentations include spontaneous cataplectic attacks or cataplexy induced by non homerous triggers such as anger. <laughs> what? <laughs> and 30% is partial com cataplexy involves the jaw and the face. Excessive daytime sleepiness is one of the most common clinical presentations of sleep disordered breathing, SDB, reported usually in up to 50% of patients. In addition to loud snoring and observed apnea or gasping by a bed partner. However, many patients with SDB are asymptomatic, particularly in sp what? special proportions with heart failure, stroke, and other neurological disorders. More details on SDB are described in the separate articles. Unusual sleep-related behaviors. Features of sleep behavior before, during, or after sleep can provide essential clues to certain sleep disorders such as movement disorders, eating disorders, or parasomnia. For example, reporting sleep-related movement disorders such as the urge to move legs during a specific time of evening could suggest restless leg movement or periodic leg movement, and further questions are needed to confirm the diagnosis. Confusional arousal or sleep drunkenness during arousal or awakening from sleep is a common manifestation of hypersomnolence disorder such as idiopathic hypersomnia, or less commonly sleep-related sex, sex, sexomnia, <laughs> sex. <laughs> sexomnia. <laughs> sexomnia is abnormal sexual behaviors without recollection, including sexual intercourse with a bed partner, masturbation, or sexual vocalizations. Okay. Patients who report movements during sleep, such as kicking, punching, arm flailing, or jumping from bed in response to violent dreams, could suffer from REM sleep dis behavior disorder, RBD. The patient can recall the dream if he awakens during the episode. This disorder may be associated with other medical conditions such as Parkinson's disease, Levy body dis dementia, or multiple symptom atro atrophy. Other sleep-related symptoms that require detailed history to reach a clinical diagnosis including sleepwalking, sleep talking, and night terrors, common in children aged 2 to 12, and usually resolve spontaneously as their child ages. They mainly occur in non-REM sleep without memory or the memory of the event. On the other hand, nightmares occur during REM sleep, usually in the middle of the night and early morning. During a nightmare, the person may scream and yell out things. There's a joke there. I, I know there's a joke there. Write, write that down, down. The difference between nightmares and night terrors is that the person can become fully alert when awakened during a nightmare. Also, there is a memory of the event in a nightmare, i.e., a person can recall a nightmare, sleep eating disorders. Also, let's see, I thought that was. Okay, see, there's a period there. Sleep eating disorders are. Other unusual sleep-related behaviors that require detailed histories to differentiate from each other. Sleep-related eating disorders, SRED, manifest as recurrent episodes of involuntary eating during the first one-third of sleep with reduced consciousness. <laughs> first off, I, I, fully awake, I can barely make food and walk around. Like, how am I getting... Would I have to sleep with a sandwich next to me or have a bowl of cereal? There, like, are you telling me, like, look, I'm an idiot. Right, that people can get up and like cook steak, make eggs, bacon and eggs, or is this like they grab a fucking thing of butter and just start eating it? Or all right, <laughs> uh, however, night eating syndrome manifests excessively, causing 
eating between dinner time and bedtime, or after complete awakening from sleep. Complex sleep behaviors are non-rapid eye movement, NREM, related behaviors such as sleepwalking, resulting in serious injuries or death, particularly among middle-aged and other patients with chronic insomnia. The symptoms associated with sleep disorders are commonly exacerbated by sleep de deprivation, physical or emotional stress, traumatic events, and the use and abuse of substance or medications. Some of the, medica some of the medicines that are in commonly linked to usual sleep-related behaviors are antipsychotics and psychotropic medications, sedatives, and hypnotic agents, particularly in the class of Z drugs or non Benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine receptor ag agnost <laughs> agonist, zolipizin, and ezopiclone, <laughs> which now have a black box warning from U.S. Food and Drug Administration due to the increase of complex sleep behaviors. Okay, so cool. So these things that I cannot pronounce are our warning labels now. Excellent. A variety of information is required to evaluate sleep problems. After a detailed medical history, medication history, and physical examination, some clinical and investigative tools could help narrow the, different, the differential diagnosis and help identify the type of sleep disorders. Here's a list of some of the questionnaires and tests. Epworth sleep, Sleepness Scale, the Fatigue Severity Scale, Insomnia Severity Scale, Sleep Diary, Sleep Studies. Now, all these are a section of you can hit links to. By the way, I would have done this on the one I usually do, the NIMH, but it would have taken nine hours because it had so many different categories. This was a better, succinct, you know, summary. But here you can find the other links to most stuff. Here's another section for laboratory studies. And there's arterial blood gases, thyroid functioning tests, drug and alcohol toxicity, Toxicity, toxicity screening, iron studies, and ferritin level, cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, hypocretin deficiency, and links, I guess, would bring you to, you know, how where the studies are. Uh, they have a, a atigraphy. In this test, an atigraphic device is worn on the wrist like a watch. The signals are detected when there is movement, and very few to no signs are recorded during sleep inactivity. This device can assess sleep-wake cycles or circ circadian rhythm over an extended period and thus diagnose advanced or delayed sleep phase syndrome. Multiple sleep latency testing. Uh, and we got treatment and management. Non-pharmaceutical. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia, CBT1, includes a set of psychological and behavioral techniques specific to treating insomnia. Studies report that CBT1 is a psychological treatment of choice using individual or group therapy techniques and recently digital CBTI formats. A meta-analysis of 61 randomized controlled trials, and which included 11,570 participants, and assessed different CBT1 delivery formats, including group, guided, self-help, digital assisted, and unguided self-help. With control conditions that found that CBT1 not only significantly increases sleep parameters such as sleep efficiency and total sleep time, but reduces sleep onset latency, wake after sleep onset, and insomnia severity. CBT1 therapy is particularly important in groups of patients that may not tolerate pharmaceutical treatment, such as older patients, due to increased risk of side effects and addiction and tolerance to using Z drugs. Other interventions are not proven to have a clinical effect if used alone. These inter interventions include sleep restriction therapy, stimulus control therapy, relaxation therapy, sleep hygiene. So this is interesting because I'm a big person on cognitive behavior therapy. Um, I guess you could say I would be in the category here of self, you know, I guess you can say digitally assisted, you know, back in the day it was, it was fucking going to the library and stuff, but okay, self-guided or whatever. Uh, pharmaceutical, uh, oh, I'm sorry, pharma 
Collagic. Histamine type 1 rep re receptor blockers, e.g. chlorophenamine and diphenhydramine, are commonly used for difficulty sleeping due to their sedative effects. However, due to their anti cholinergic effect, these drugs could these drugs should be avoided. Benzodiazepines, BZDs. <laughs> these drugs are commonly used to treat insomnia. The drugs bind to a particular benzodiazepine site on the gamma amylbutyric acid, GABA. There's another joke in there, Dancing Queen, right? You could have Dancing Gene or something. ABBA. <laughs> Receptor complex, enhancing the activity of neurotransmitters. These drugs suppress REM sleep and reduce stage 3 sleep while increasing stage 2 sleep. Examples include Fluorazepan and Tamazepan. Tamazepan. Yeah, I'm going to fucking name a character that. Hey. Who's that? Oh, that's Tamazepan. And his brother, Florazepan. I don't fucking that's him. See, I, I, all right, little side note here. Being a dungeon master for like 30 something fucking years <laughs> on the fly when you're playing and you don't have things set up. And even when you do have time to set up, making character names gets fucking crazy for me. So, there you go. <laughs> Whoever's listening to this who plays, be ready to meet. Fucking Tamazepan and his brother, Florazepan. Oh, you know what, sister? You know, the Flora? See? Yeah, I get it. non hypnotic or Z drugs. These agents are used to treat acute and short-term insomnia. These drugs have been, or have non-BZD-like chemical structures, but interact with the GABA-BZD receptor, causing sedation. Examples include Zolipidin and Zelopon. <laughs> bang, bang, another two names, right? Eh? Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't. Melatonin receptor ag agonist. The melatonin receptors MTI, M MT, uh, MT1 and MT2 are uh, implicated in regulating sleepness and the waking, the sleep-wake cycle. Melatonin receptor agonists act on these receptors and improve sleep through the end endogenous regulating system. These drugs are used in circadian rhythm sleep disorders, jet lag, and delayed sleep-wake phase disorder, insomnia with difficulty in sleep onset. Examples include ram Ramotilion. <laughs> Ramotilion. <laughs> yeah. Orexin. <laughs> Receptor antagonistics. Orexin promotes wakefulness. Thus, the, antag the antagonism of this receptor helps in sleep. An example includes Sovorexant, which improved ISI through improvement in sleep onset and maintenance. Treatment of OSA includes primary mechanical positive airway therapy, PAP, lifestyle changes, and options of oral appliances or surgical procedures in certain patients. The use of drug treatments such as so reamphetol <laughs> stimulants such as amphetamines or morphindel or motif <laughs> are non oh fuck it come on non repiphine riffine reuptake inhibitors to increase wakefulness in patients with OSA and persistent hypersomnia despite adequate PAP Adherence and elimination of respiratory events can be considered in selected patients to treat their daytime symptoms. A long-term study of the safety and efficiency of Soriamfetol under open-label and double-blind placebo-controlled conditions demonstrated long-term efficacy of Soramifetol, Soramifetol, and reported side effects in less than 5% of patients with OSA or narcolepsy, such as headache, nausea, nasopara fucking megitis, insomnia, dry mouth, anxiety, decreased appetite, and upper respiratory tract infection. 
A number of medications can be used for the treatment of narcolepsy. Motif oh, you fucker. Motifinel, a non amphetamine stimulant that promotes wakefulness, is considered first time or first line therapy for narcolepsy as it reduces daytime sleepiness, is well tolerated, and has less abuse potential compared to traditional stimulants. Amphetamines, metamphetamines, These traditional drugs are second line drugs. Patients with significant cat catalepsy or ca is it ca it's catalepsy. Plexi. Cataplexy. Oh, God. May benefit from REM suggesting medications such as antidepressants and sodium oxboid. Light phase shift therapy is useful for sleep disturbances associated with circadian rhythm abnormalities. Patients may be exposed to bright light to help normalize their sleep cycle. Gallop. Gallopenfin. An Arkabel. Oh shit, that's a Lord of the Rings name right there. Gabapentin and Carbon. Come on. That that's definitely <sighs> a, a pro drug formation of Gabapentin significantly improves restless leg syndrome and hence can alleviate sleep disturbance. Differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis of sleep disorders is as follows. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, depression, anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, opioid abuse, alcoholism, stimulants abuse, uh, amphetamine, it says, chronic obstructive primary opalimony disease, and hypothyroidism. Prognosis. Insufficient sleep can result in industrial or motor vehicle accidents, decreased work performance, and cognitive dysfunction. The prognosis of sleep disorders depends widely on the cause of the sleep disorder. Insomnia due to OSA generally resolves with treatment, whereas patients with chronic insomnia have an increase of depression, anxiety, and reduced quality of life. Complications. Unrelated sleep disorders may lead to increased risk of accidents, and the development of various serious complications. Mood and anxiety disorders may develop. <laughs> develop? They fucking thrive. They fucking... Sleep de deprivation can lead to false memory and a decline in cognitive functioning. Yeah. Patients with periodic limb dis movement disorder may have a higher risk of cere cerebrovascular accidents. Unrelated OSA, especially if severe associated with hyposomnia, can lead to various cardiovascular disorders. All patients should be educated well and encouraged to practice good sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is, in term, is a term used to describe good sleep habits. The following should be given to patients to practice good sleep hygiene. Maintain a regular schedule, i.e. go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. Use the bed for sleep and sex only. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'm sorry. The world's doomed. Sex in the bed only. The fuck out of What is this? What are we, dark ages? Avoid watching television, looking at phones, or reading in the bed. Exercise almost every day, but not right before bedtime. Avoid caffeine or smoking, mainly during the evening. <laughs> Good luck. Maintain a dark, calm, and quiet environment in the bedroom. Avoid struggling to fall asleep in bed. If you can't sleep, get up and try again later, or change the bed. <laughs> change the bed. Also, if the patient takes sedative hypnotic medications, this should be demonstrated in the medical record. Patients should be counseled to avoid driving and operating machines when under these medications. The proper management of sleep disorders requires the efforts of an interprofessional healthcare team that includes clinicians, MD, DOs, NPs, and PAs, specialists, pharmacists, nursing staff, psychological professionals, social workers, counselors, etc., and in some cases, a sleep clinic. And a dietitian. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Surgical 
consultations are required for some of the underlying causes of insomnia, such as in the cases of OSA, which may require palate surgery. Interprofessional collaboration is essential for good patients' outcomes in sleep disorders. Nurses can coordinate activities between the managing clinicians and other health professionals on the case, as well as the counsel, the patient, and answer any questions. The pharmacist will verify medication dosing, check for interactions, and counsel patients on proper administration. Sleep clinics will look deeper into the case, including potential sleep studies when indicated. Psychological professionals will work with any case issues that may contribute to sleep problems and report to the rest of the interprofessional team. Clinicians will do well to consider input from all team members in deciding their course of therapy. The patient and possibly family, spouses and patient, parents, are also members of the care team. All interprofessional team members are responsible for maintenance accurate, uh, maintaining accurate and updated records regarding the patient's case with severe or whatever interaction intervention taken. They must also be free to openly communicate with all of the team members when they're out. Any concerns about the patient's condition or progress? This interprofessional model will help drive optimal outcomes for those patients which experience issues with sleep disorders of any type. Now, what I like about this little part at the end with the team is because this isn't an opinion piece thing, God, all fucking long, it feels like I did this for an hour. It's all the fucked up words, anyway. Um, it's good to know, like, they're, they're trying to improve the industry in any case um even if it's a certain curriculum for a, a certain hospital or whatever or you know a certain grouping of um psychiatrists or whatever it, you know giving hints about the tips and the teams but it just gives you the scope and make and it, the weight of this like all these disorders i've been describing i don't think any one is more major than the other although i bet i could be convinced of it obviously there's a certain person I'm thinking of right now, and, you know, obviously, they're screaming in my ear about fucking what is obviously the worst types of things, but, you know, in the, in the long run, the stress, the anxiety, all this stuff builds up, that's why I want to get these out, there's a um, needing me to get these out, just to do a block that I've always wanted to do of the mental illness and disorders, this should be the end. Well, no, you know what? I think, uh, you know, I have three more as an option. But I'm not sure if I wanted to do them. Because as you start getting through this list, there's certain things that, like, just feel that they, well, you know what? Then I'm thinking about it. Maybe I'll do them anyway. Because and, and, and if something about me doesn't want to leave out something that's important to somebody. I'm hoping I'm grabbing all these things. But in any case, we'll see where that goes. So here we are. I'll put the link in the description. For sleep disorders, this was a lengthy one, I think, although I could be surprised. It just feels longer because another murder of the English language. Uh, this Na National Library of Medicine by Bibek Kama, Abdulgani, Sankari, and Githika Tatikanda. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Till next time, take care.